People sometimes make music in their basement. In our basement, we don't make music. We do experiments. The director of the Centre for Sustainable Materials Research and Technology, inventor, engineer extraordinaire, and this year's New South Wales Australian of the Year, Professor Veena Sahajwala. Professor Veena Sahajwala. Veena Sahajwala. We do often see waste as something that just needs to be thrown away. Well, actually, there's no such thing as a way. This is the one planet that we have. Veena is known as the waste queen. This should not be wasted. Reviving waste, bringing it back to life, is the way of the future. We need to be bold and brave and think big. We have to look beyond traditional recycling. As a kid, something I loved doing was really being very curious about all kinds of products that we were using. Around the apartment buildings where I was a kid growing up in Mumbai, all these small traders would come around collecting your waste newspaper and in exchange would want to give you a little steel spoon. And that amazed me because it was like, ah, so actually all of that waste paper and waste glass bottles was going to be useful to somebody. It was seen as a viable business. You know, things at home could actually also support that local economy. I studied materials, science and engineering. I was interested in the whole of life, the raw materials, the making of different kinds of products. That led to asking that question, what happens to all of these different products when we no longer have a need for it in that form? We have to really ask whether we're doing enough in Australia and indeed in the world to keep our waste out of landfill. All of these are imported materials. They've been made once to serve a purpose. And that doesn't mean that they only deserve to have one life. What we actually want to see is the more we preserve quality of these materials after they've had one life, they can actually come back to life again. I'd like to think that we have embarked upon something that is a world's first. In our micro factories, we are isolating different kinds of materials, not burning them, indeed transforming them into valuable materials that are ready to come back to life in a whole new form. The things that we have thought about and created right here at the Smart Center is what we call micro-recycling. The demolition and the construction waste that comes off when buildings have to be demolished and rebuilt, that complex mixture of steel or plastics or glass, it could well sadly end up in landfill. So we can put steel and metals and aluminium and all of that in separate piles. Why don't we also have different piles of nice glass and textiles? Because that could help us channel more and more of these materials into remanufacturing. You can actually allow metals and non-metals to come apart through thermal transformation. Shoalhaven City Council have been doing an amazing job creating recycled crushed glass. This crushed material combines with waste textiles to create green ceramic tiles in our micro factories. For this council here, they're not just collecting that waste in our yellow bins, but they're really converting this into a valuable resource, an engineered green ceramic product. The mattress is, even though it looks on surface very simple, it's actually a complex product. It needs to have strength, so it's got metal inside. It's obviously got a lot of nice fabric. So what we are looking at is 
basically taking some metallics and textile waste and using that textile waste as a feedstock for our green ceramics. We can actually set up these distributed micro factories close to where our waste resources are located already. And you've got these supplies of different kinds of raw materials that we might have considered as waste now suddenly becoming resources for manufacturing. Seriously save with 25% off our book and essential guide bundle this slow November. Our beautiful book will inspire you with detailed floor plans and gorgeous photography. And our new essential guide to your living room will teach you how to create the never too small look in your own home. Click on the view products button on the bottom left of your screen or on the link in the description and use the code slow November at checkout. We love our electronic devices. Whether it is our phone, our computers, our TV monitors. There's a lot of different kinds of materials, whether it is our metals or plastics or glass, that's there in all kinds of electronic devices. We do also realize that as technologies advance, we're generating a lot of e-waste, a lot of electronic waste. In fact, e-waste is the world's fastest growing waste. So what are we doing about it? We have a long way to go in terms of harvesting every part of our electronic waste. We sometimes see those plastics as rather complex and difficult. For example, on a circuit board, you will have a polymer as well as copper. You know, it is really hard to imagine that mechanically you're just going to separate all of this out. So what we are really talking about is the micro recycling solution where thermal transformations allow you to get the metallic and the non-metallic parts to literally come apart. That means that when you think about fundamentally all kinds of complex systems, there is a way to imagine the making, the unmaking, and then remaking new products. Our solutions don't have to always go back into remanufacturing exactly the same thing. Well, we're hoping that our plastic materials from our e-waste can be converted into plastic filaments for 3D printing. A lot of our metals like our copper and tin can go back into production of new electronic systems. By bringing that plastic waste into our micro factories, as an example, creating plastic filaments and using those to 3D print plants, for instance, in a construction project. That's exciting to show that we can achieve these outcomes. And to do that in a micro factory is an absolute icing on the cake. There is steel everywhere and steel is a material that will always be needed. After all, the world is using about 1.9 billion tons of steel every year. So think about how much steel we all need, whether it's to make our homes or our cars. There's a lot of scrap metal that is available in our economy. So imagine if you could take all that scrap metal and we can bring that in to electric arc furnaces to make steel. About 250,000 tons per year of steel scrap is being recycled here in Newcastle. And if we didn't do this, can you imagine all of this waste steel would just simply be thrown away? Whereas now all of this fabulous scrap is indeed being used as a resource to recycle and reform and make new steel. Traditionally, when we think about making of steel, we would normally think about coal. Of course, in metallurgical coal, you have to convert that into a hard, solid product called coke. The reason why we're using coal and coke is because of the carbon that is needed in the making of steel. 
But what if you could find those alternative feedstock materials to actually harvest that carbon? You could make green steel without the reliance on coal and coke. Waste materials like steel and tires in a big bulky form have to be shredded down. And when they are shredded, they can be fed into electric arc furnaces and converted into steel. We want to get to the point where we can completely eliminate the need for coal and coke. Why should we not use waste as valuable resources for manufacturing materials that we need? The next challenge that we're embarking on when we start to think about micro recycling is how do we actually take complex plastic coming from e-waste and unpack it, not for making new plastics, but for making green steel. The fact that that plastic is rich in carbon can actually replace some of the traditional coke-based materials that would have been used in the production and the making of steel. We will be able to use green steel in making all kinds of products, whether it is for our building applications, our industrial applications, for making machinery and equipment. Of course, the list goes on and on. The whole reforming of materials into products is important because we're actually creating this laterally integrated system where waste could come from our homes and our offices and then it becomes part of the economy. If we can set up pathways, multiple pathways through which we can recycle, reform and remanufacture all kinds of high quality, highly engineered products, then it allows our communities and our societies to use these kinds of engineered products these kinds of micro factories, if they are actually set up where waste is available, we're also creating local jobs. We're actually enabling capacity building so we can manufacture these kinds of ceramic products, for instance, in our communities, in our small businesses. And that's exactly what we are doing. It can go right back into doing the refurb, the retrofit and the rebuild Imagine if in the future, when we look at our buildings, our homes, our offices, imagine if we can see them made from our waste textiles and our waste glass. If we can actually sort and channel products that are now no longer functioning to the right destinations, we can actually do a lot in terms of working within the system that we have in Australia. We've got to look towards our local businesses and if there are local businesses that are offering recycling services or if there is a local council that is offering that kind of services, we need to play a part. Imagine all of us at homes, we're actually got these mini resources and our mini resources can feed into our local council. That could then feed into a micro factory and that then becomes part of that supply chain. I often dream of a world where we are caring for our planet and we are caring for our people. Everybody, no matter where they work, is working under safe and really sustainable operations, making goods that are produced in a way that they can be recycled over and over again. Waste is a resource and should be seen as a resource. The world actually can win and can benefit from micro-recycling and micro-factories.